angry ass bitch right now. Y'all need to get in here because I'm about to I'm about to go off right now. There's a 120 million budget cut in New York that is going to affect schools, public libraries, and um the police department. Ain't gonna be no after school for your kids. The teachers are gonna be paid. Yes, they're bar- they're go- they're barely gonna be paid. That's one. Libraries, they're closing library branches. These leaders, they don't have our best interests. I'm always gonna speak for the people. Rapper Cardi B is speaking out after New York's mayor Eric Adams announced that the city will be enacting about four billion dollars in total budget cuts over the next year and a half, and that will, in fact, impact schools, sanitation, police, and more. So let's get into the details. Adams announced the steep budget cuts amid news that New York City is facing a seven billion dollar budget gap. The budget calls for billions of dollars of cuts, including hundreds of millions from schools and libraries and $1.1 billion from the New York Police Department alone, shrinking the department by 13.5% over the course of two years. But it's okay because it's not like crime has increased at all in cities like New York, right? Everything's totally fine. I'm being sarcastic. Now the cuts will drop the number of cops patrolling the streets to the lowest number since the 1990s. So I'm gonna make a very snide remark here, and it's a rhetorical question, but how excited are leftists about this? Congratulations, less police on the streets, (laughs) anyway. Yeah. But anyway, sanitation is also being cut back, along with overtime pay for the members of the fire department. Every city agency will see a 5% cut, including freezing police recruitment. At schools, a new class of 250 school safety agents will be cut. Education advocates expect schools to lose more than $1 billion in resources. And 120 million will be eliminated from pre-K and 3K programs, which is the number that Cardi had referred to in the video we just watched. The United Federation of Teachers said that 653 schools or 43% of the school system would be hit with mid-year budget cuts. And Eric Adams blames this budget shortfall on the fact that the migrant crisis has hit New York City particularly hard. And he argues that the federal government is not providing the resources necessary to deal with the migrant crisis. We'll give you more details on that in just a moment. Cenk, what are your thoughts? Yeah, hidden in this was an excellent critique of our military spending. So we're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, and there's two things she was obsessed with, rats and wars, okay? But buried within the rat segment was raccoons. So there's so much great stuff here. So let's show you more of Cardi B and then and then we'll talk more about it. Let's All right, watch. let's watch. There's gonna be an $120 million budget cut with schools, with the libraries and the cops and the police department and a $5 million budget cut in sanitation of a budget cut in sanitation. Bitch, we're going to be drowning with rats. We're going to be drowning in rats. Crimes are going to go up the roof, bitch. The crimes are going to go up the roof because because there's there's a, there's a, a, a police safety budget cut. I don't give, I'm not endorsing no presidents no more because how is that a hundred hundred million dollar budget cut in new york city for for um schools library uh police safety and sanitation yeah joe biden is talking about like yeah we could fund two wars we could fund two wars my talking about we don't got it but we got it like we're the greatest nation no the we're not we're going through some right now yeah. cardi b for president oh my god yeah. oh my god Look, uh, they, she is hitting on something that is an interesting development that has begun, which is, it's a very rough way of saying it, but America first for the left. Where the left is saying, why would we keep funding these wars? I mean, we've been saying that for all this time to begin with, but saying now you're gonna tell us that we, you don't have enough money for New York, you don't have enough money for sanitation, for schools, etc. But you're gonna fund two wars. She's gonna talk more about that in a second, but it, she didn't have that. It, she, I watched the whole thing, it was amazing. One of her lines, one of my favorite lines was, we're gonna have raccoons on 42nd Street. That's what I we're gonna mean, have. Look, the okay. raccoons are the least of the concerns here, I yeah. mean. She was obsessed with the rats, but the rats led to the raccoons, which led to 42nd Street. But um, but it, back to serious stuff, 
She's making a really legitimate critique of American policy. And she's priorities. Saying, yeah, she's saying you don't have, you keep telling us at every turn that you don't have enough money for us. And the minute a war pops up, you got nothing but cash. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna go to the next clip. And then after that, if she doesn't have, the, if we don't have the great line in there, I'll tell you the great line she had about the wars too. Let's watch. And yeah, we talk about we we could fund two wars. That's like a trying to front like, yeah, I got the money to support two bitches, but you really don't. No, we cannot fund these wars. We can't. Keep it a bean. We can't. Like y'all, y'all doing budget cuts on 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 the biggest city in the United States. We can't fund these wars. We can't. We could barely fund this country. Finish it. Y'all need to finish it. Stop fronting like you got the money. You don't got no money. You don't got no sugar for your honeys. That was a lot. I love that. And she kept coming back to you don't have any sugar for your honeys. <laughs> and now, but you're fronting, saying like, oh, okay, I, oh yeah, we got plenty of war for uh, the money for war, Israel, Ukraine, etc. Well, you don't have, do you have it or don't you have it? Do you only have it for other countries? Do you only have it for wars? Or are you gonna have any for the American people? That is a super fair question. The left's been asking it historically. It's about time we got way louder about asking for that. There's no reason why the right wing should grab the mantle of we represent the American people as opposed to sending money abroad for wars and other disasters. We should, we've owned that historically. I love what Cardi B is saying. And she's and if you notice, she said, I'm not endorsing any more politicians. Mm -hmm. Because she was with Bernie and she liked Bernie and no nothing against Bernie. But then because of Trump, she backed Biden. And now she's saying, sorry, you didn't finish it. We asked you to finish the job here at home, you didn't. And now you're running off to uh, with money to for your honeys abroad, okay? And so that's real. And part of what's great about Cardi B is she doesn't feel, feel any need to be restrained. Totally, I love it. And I love so it everybody so else that's involved in politics and media, they're like all buttoned up and they're like, uh, I can only say things that are pre approved, otherwise people will yell at me. And then and Cardi B is like, yeah, well, get out the way, yo, get out the way, okay? Here's what I mean, here's what I'm saying, and I don't care what anybody thinks. That's why we love her. The crime's about to go up, bitch. Like, that was my, <laughs> that was my favorite line, because mm -hmm. it's true. And they're about to experience it. So let's let's go back to the reasons that Mayor Adams is giving for these budget cuts. And look, honestly, I think that he's making a legitimate point here. And I think the federal government under the leadership of the Biden administration has really failed to deliver for the cities that are grappling with the migrant crisis. You want to allow migrants in? That's fine, but you have to fund the resources necessary to take care of these individuals, to shelter them. Now, Adams, again, blamed the billions of dollars spent on the migrant crisis and the expiring federal aid for these budget cuts. Migrant costs are going up, tax revenue growth is slowing, and COVID-19 stimulus funding is drying up. No city should be left to handle a national humanitarian crisis largely on its own and without the significant and timely support we need from Washington. Today's budget will only be the beginning, or will be only the beginning. And look, I also wanna just make a note about honestly something that I personally overlooked and I wanna take responsibility for that because I didn't realize what a lot of these border towns had been dealing with and what they had been complaining about. And a lot of these residents living in these border towns had been smeared by the media as bigots and xenophobes who just don't wanna allow migrants into the country. When in reality, they were dealing with the brunt of the migrant crisis and the lack of resources from the federal government to take care of the situation. Now that you see it happening in blue cities, in cities that have democratic strongholds, you see what the reality of the situation really is. And I'm glad that we see what the reality of the situation is because it's inhumane for the migrants and incredibly unfair with the cities that have this influx of migrants coming in who they do not have the resources to take care of. Yeah, you heard me say it on the first day that Texas started busing people to the major democratic cities. I said, I think it makes sense, I think it's fair. Uh, why do the border uh, states have to deal with all of the pain that comes in uh, on this? I'm in favor of uh, more immigration. Uh, and so I'm in favor of more uh, uh, asylum uh, seekers getting asylum in this country. But we have to share the pain equally. We have to be honest about it, 
right? And so if there's an influx, we have to figure out a way to deal with that. We have to have rational policies and we have to care. And when I say, uh, you know, the left subversion of America first, that doesn't mean you hate other people. That's that's the difference between us and some bad strains of it on the on the right wing, right? It means, hey, wherever, you know, as Bruce Springsteen uh, said, wherever this flag is flown, we take care of our own. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not as opposed to other people. It's not as, it doesn't mean you hate other people. It just means, hey, the core job of the government is to take care of your own. And so, and, and those immigrants are our own too, in a, in a lot of ways. But you can't just say, oh, here's a bunch of immigrants and border states, you deal with it. And now, oh, they're in New York and Chicago, et cetera. Now you guys deal with it and we're not gonna help you. No, you've gotta be fair about it, both to the immigrants and to the American people. You gotta be fair about crime, you gotta be fair about the schools, et cetera. Asking for fairness and justice is the bare minimum. It's not a big ask. So Adams estimates that by the summer of 2025, New York City will spend about $12 billion managing the migrant crisis without more federal help. But I actually wanna talk about the no bid contracts that are being shelled out to various organizations to deal with the migrant crisis because no bid contracts means that the people of New York City are not getting the best deal possible, okay? So almost all of the 196 migrant related contracts are presumed to have been signed under the emergency procurement processes, a city council oversight committee found. The process forgoes the typical oversight, making sure the city is getting competitive pricing. Just three of the deals were made through a competitive sealed bid or proposal the committee found. That's a big problem. And look, it might have something to do with the emergency situation and trying to basically get action executed as quickly as possible as more and more migrants were flowing into New York City. But clearly there's waste taking place here. Council investigators also discovered that a majority of the spending on migrants, some $2.2 billion worth of contracts is being funneled through the New York City Health and Hospitals Corps, a city managed nonprofit, city managed nonprofit that operates with greater financial independence and more, they're very opaque than a city agency, for instance. Look, we have the same problem here in Los Angeles as it pertains to the homelessness crisis, money, literally billions of dollars a year get funneled to these nonprofits. And all of this information is public. You look at the employees and the executives at these nonprofits, they're making half a million dollars a year or more dealing with the homeless crisis in Los Angeles. And there's usually a revolving door in yes. democratic politics where they go into politics, they go into these nonprofits, and it's a nice little money making machine for them. And then, and, and hence the frustration of the Cardi B's of the world, where she keeps telling you, finish it. We gotta see results. If you take our money, God bless, and you get results, no problem. If you take our money and we got no results, and all you have money left for is wars, no. No, then you don't get any endorsements. This is not the right way to handle it, and you got a rebellion on your hands. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member, and members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence, and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.